until today i've never really went back and watched my own videos um, after i get done uploading them but today i had some time and i actually did that just to see what you guys are seeing once it's put out there one of the reasons why i don't watch them or you know, a lot of people will edit their video and they'll watch it as they're editing it make sure it's good i don't do that um, just because by the time i get out here get the camera going um, you know start working on what i'm working on for that day and then getting it all together and you know putting it out there or whatever letting it download uh, i'm pretty wore out by the time i do all that so i just you know fly by the seat of my pants so i was really curious to see how things are turning out on your guys's end of what you're actually seeing and um, i'm pretty impressed with it as as far as like what's coming out and what it actually looks like versus what it looks like to me because when i'm doing this stuff you know it's it's kind of weird it's kind of awkward if you've never really videotaped yourself but talking to yourself is kind of weird um and then making sure what i'm showing you as far as what i'm doing is you know coming across correctly so um, i think we're headed in the right direction obviously the new gopro i bought is helping um, i used to jump back and forth from an old gopro and my phone and if you don't buy into those apps that edit and transfer your files and images and all that stuff on your phone you really can't do much on your phone and it just it shrinks everything up and it just makes it look weird and um so i ended up buying a new gopro and you know bought one of the latest ones so i think it's coming out really good so you guys have to you guys will have to let me know down in the comments um if you guys are enjoying the newer videos that are coming out i think they're a little bit clearer obviously i'm filming everything in like high definition like 1080 or 4k um so things are going to be a lot better um that's really important with watching with this you know with what i'm doing i want to make sure you guys are getting every little bit of detail and information i'm putting out there for you um so yeah i was, I was pretty impressed with it so i think we're headed in the right direction it's just going to take time for me to you know get comfortable doing this stuff more often but i'm happy with where we're going um you know i don't really i've said this a couple times i don't really edit my videos i do in a sense of you know when i make videos there's more than one video because i just don't let it play the way i do my videos is like i'll turn on the gopro when i'm ready to show you guys what i'm doing um and i don't send my footage out to some fancy editor i don't pay anybody to do it. i do it all myself so i usually just copy and paste make it all one video and throw it out there um, i think that is you know as far as with what i'm doing i think that's a lot better than me going in and fancying everything up um, and putting a lot of just different bells and whistles in there i know that type of stuff gets more traction um, people are willing to click on your stuff more if you guys kind of you know like do like the clickbaity titles and the thumbnails and all that bull crap um, I'm not going that direction just because I'd rather give it to you guys raw and you know you're gonna see anything that may go good or may go bad you're gonna see it because it's gonna be on the video I don't shorten any, anything up I don't really do anything as far as editing goes um, every once in a while I'll like speed something up if I am showing something that's gonna take a little bit longer but other than that it's it it is how it is because it's the way I filmed it so if you have any you know if you're curious about that that's why i do what i do um that way you guys are getting the most raw footage that i have and it's the only footage that i have so there's nothing now you know i'm not trying to hide anything i'm not trying to make it look like this stuff is easy i'm not trying to like fool anybody i'm here to show you guys um and educate to the best of my ability of what actually this stuff in, in, involves um, because it's not something that you're just going to learn overnight. I'm pretty well 21 years into it. So I have touched on a little, a lot of little different subjects over my years. And I also paint full time too. So, um, yeah, so I kind of burn the candles at both ends, if you will. I do collision stuff during the day. Then I do this custom stuff at night. So you're going to get a little bit of everything, but I'm going to mainly just, you know, like I've said before, just film what I do at home because I think that's pretty important to educate the people whether you're going to be someone that's willing to deep dive into this stuff and start learning and, and take the time to learn it or you're going to be a customer 
and knowing what you need to know as far as what you're going to be getting into with somebody and how they're going to actually approach what you want to get done obviously a lot of artists are all different they're not we're, we don't all do the same thing we usually you know we'll we'll steal a little bit here and there from each person or you know take what we like and what we don't like and kind of combine it all with our style so every artist is going to be different if you are going to be a customer but for the most part the end results all going to be the same so yeah i just want to kind of touch on that if you guys are curious about how that stuff is coming along i'm having a little bit of issues like i said in my last video with things getting uploaded fast enough so i'm going to try to shorten the videos a little bit and just show you guys the important stuff rather than make hour or two hour long videos and just kind of show you guys what you guys need to actually see in order to get the idea across of what i'm actually doing and what you actually can learn if that makes any sense so we're going to jump right into this video today we're going to be doing the passenger side and the passenger side was it's pretty much 50 percent done um we also we got the you know the lightning bolt logo from the band the grateful dead with the blue and the red and the song lyrics on each side of that ghosted in there but we're going to be moving on to the doors there's a set of doors that open up um, on this van that we're going to be doing some stylized lettering to so i'm going to show you guys just exactly where we are on this project right now so we have i have gotten approval already of the customer as far as the lettering goes you guys probably can't see too much of it so i spent a lot of my time figuring out how these letters are gonna look in my head i know what they're, they're gonna look like on the van it's just it's sometimes hard to get that across to the customer because the customer does not have any idea or any clue what things are going to look like it's almost you almost have to do it and finish it for them to understand hey this is what it's going to look like if you get my drift so it's really hard sometimes to portray that to the customer so you gotta do the best job you can um, of doing that so this side's going to say touch of gray because that is Pretty much the theme of this van is the song Touch of Grey and that's why hence we did everything in grey tones because it's going to reflect off of the song. Um, so what I've done is obviously I've done the letters already. Now this is just a rough sketch of it just to get the idea across. This is my second time doing this so I want to make it really clear that when you're doing stuff like this you know, it, it's gonna take you a couple tries, especially when you're just making something out of nothing. You're not gonna get it the first time. And to be honest with you, this second time, it's not fully to where I want it. And there's some things I wanna change on it. So we're gonna do that along the way. But just give you a heads up that you are not going to get everything done the first time around. It's gonna take multiple times. It's gonna take hours and hours of time to do this stuff. Um, so just don't get frustrated with it, but I'm going to walk you through kind of the process that I did to kind of help you understand a little bit more of what I'm doing. So with this side, he wanted the letters, the font, let's say, to be exactly like this poster. Just the kind of the font style of it, which this font style is made up by this artist that did this poster the same artist done many posters and he really liked the font that he did on this so i didn't directly copy this but there is a lot of similarities between this and the one i just did now obviously i like i said i've, I've done this multiple times already trying to get it the best that i can so the first thing i did was i put the piece of paper up there and I went online trying to find a font that was almost close enough to that to where I can get it 
to where I could just vector it out and have my computer to do everything. But there is none. There is nothing out there online that is anything close to what that poster has. And as I started thinking about it, I was like, I'm not gonna find it because that is the artist's, you know, that's his own font that he created for his designs on those posters. So a lot of times you're not gonna find everything that you need in order to use for a reference. So what I did was I just kind of dug deep in the web and I started searching, you know, for Grateful Dead font and a bunch of other things and, you know, 3D shadowing letters, um, just a bunch of different weird stuff just to see if I can find anything close enough to where I can use it and manipulate it. And what I came up with was a font that the Grateful Dead used on one of their albums. It was literally called Grateful Dead font. So I was like, hey, this is going to be something that's going to be able to be, I can actually work off of. So I went in, they had like this thing online to where you could type in any phrase you wanted to, and it would translate that to that certain font. So I did that, and then I went through, and I pretty much tried to save it as a file, and then transfer it over to my vector program, and that... It, it just wouldn't let you. There's a lot of sites out there when you're doing fonts that if you want something specific that you either got to buy it, you either got to, you know, download it for free. Sometimes you get lucky it's free. Um, but this one in particular, I think it was because it's a trademark symbol. Um, so they wouldn't let you do anything with it. So what I did was I took a piece of paper and I that when I typed in the touch of gray phrase in there, it translated it into like the same exact lettering that was shown on that album. So what I did was I took a piece of paper, stuck it on my computer screen, and I traced it out. I took that traced piece of paper, took a picture of it on my phone, emailed it to myself. <laughs> It's a lot of steps, but just hear me out. This is a little bit kind of going to the backbones of how to like manipulate stuff to make it work for your advantage. So I emailed it to myself and I was able to save it on my computer and open it up and make it any size I wanted. And then what I did was I stuck it on a thumb disk drive and I stuck it in my projector. So I was able to get it onto the projector and I projected it onto this paper. Now, it was not 3D at all. I messed with a little bit of it 3D wise on my computer and I just couldn't get it the way that I wanted it to look. And I showed the customer and he wasn't really thrilled about it. Some of the letters he really didn't like. So I was like, well, let me throw it up there on the van and see what it's gonna look like. And that's what I did. So that was this first round was this exactly what I had vectorized and drew up on my computer as a 3D font of that same font that was on that album cover. So this was my first try. I, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look anything like what he wanted on this <coughs> poster here. So. I started looking at the, the, you know, the two from what I did from this one and the letters are really scrunched up in this one. So I was like, I'll just do that and I'll scrunch them up and I'll try it again. So I started messing around again on my computer was scrunching everything up really close. And then I saved it again on my thumb drive, stuck it in my projector again projected it up on there and I got it to where it was close enough to where I could actually just draw the rest of it. So the customer came over, saw it. I'm gonna actually, let me just start it for you guys here. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So it's gonna come up. I don't know if you guys can see that on the van, but I'm going through this. So, if you 
you guys can see that up there. That is what I was working with. That dark blue, the lettering right there. So that is with me modifying it, scrunching it up, and getting it to where it was stretched out evenly to where we wanted it. And the customer's like, man, I just don't like some, I don't like the Y, I don't like the T, don't like the H. And what he didn't like about it was all those little, you know, the curly cues. He didn't want the curly cues, he wanted it to kind of wrap. So I was like, all right, that's not a big deal. Like, I was just using this font as a guide anyway. So this was just something that I could use to get the lettering and the proportions of the lettering down right. So what I did was I let that sit up there and I just kind of looked at the poster. Like I changed the Y up. The Y is totally different from the Y that was over here. You know, the, the R, instead of being lowercase, I made it capital. The E also was lowercase. I just made it capital. So I went through, did all that, and I worked from one side to the other. And as I went along, I started adding the 3D effect to it. Um, because with the letters being so close together, that 3D has to be pretty much spot on to where it looks like the letters are hugging each other with no space in them. Because that is exactly what this poster is. Like there is some, you might see some space in here, you know, but everything else, it's pretty much sitting on top of each other. So that was the idea of this was to make it look like they were actually hugging each other without any space and then making it look like kind of like they're facing up a little bit with a little bit of curve to it. So that was my sketch phase was this one. That's how I did it. I just found something that was close enough to where I can get it proportioned right and then I just freehanded everything else into it. So that is that's exactly how i did it obviously it took me some time it wasn't it didn't happen really fast to be honest with you so with this like even the h's i i, I changed everything on this so it took me some time to do this but sent it to the customer he was really happy with it he was happy with everything besides this little hook which i agreed with him on so we're going to delete this so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to leave it kind of have a little bit of a wrap off the end of it like that. I'm going to make that just kind of kind of point out right there and I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is I am taking my Sharpie and I'm going through and I'm going to do it outline everything one more time to make it permanent that will be the the uh, final stretch of making this thing to where I can transfer it onto the next you know on the background of it and how I'm going to transfer it is I'm going to lay down my FBS gold mask on the back of this I'm going to first place this where it needs to be as far as where it needs to go. We've pretty much calculated to where it's kind of be in the middle of this window. The lettering needs to be on the middle of this window. It's close right now, but we're gonna move it up just a hair. And uh, we're gonna get this thing to where it's even on both sides. That way it doesn't look so crazy. So once we get there, I'll pick it back up after I lay all the vinyl on, and then I'll show you guys how we're gonna transfer this thing over. All right, so it is ready for me to lay out my uh, my vinyl gold mask here. Uh, this is the FBS gold mask. It's really awesome stuff. I mentioned it in the last video, but this is pretty much just the vinyl that's really thin, and you can you know you draw on it whatever you want to do. Send it through your plotter, it'll cut. It's really thin stuff, so <clears throat> when you're using it for painting. Uh, it's just like a stencil film is what it is, but uh, it's really thin. So like the paint buildup on it, it doesn't give you like a really hard edge line. So that's what you need to look for when you're using any type of uh, vinyl that you're using for stencil work. 
you don't want anything really thick but just go ahead and you know the gold mask or the blue is the best uh, the blue does kind of curve a little bit better than this stuff does it's a little bit more expensive but either one you can't go wrong with um so i'll walk you through this because this is a big piece of uh sticker pretty much so in order to do this i always recommend doing the hinge technique so you want to find somewhat of the middle put a piece of tape down all the way top to bottom and then what you do is you undo one side you start peeling it up rip off the backing material this white and then you can start laying it down from the middle and you go outward it's really easy you can do it by yourself obviously if you got a bunch of stuff in the way if it's not a flat surface you gotta be really careful because you can really ruin it so have two people help you if you need it but usually you can tackle it by yourself no problem so i just want to kind of mention that before i do it show you guys how to lay something that's really big but if it's something that's cut out already and it's really huge um, this works great for it but two people will make your life a lot easier especially if you got to get it right as far as proportions go this is just i'm just laying it on there so i can drill on it and then uh, cut it out so it just needs to be somewhat flat there's no sur there's really no curves it's a flat surface so it's not as bad doing it by yourself but if you're having something that's really intricate and it's a design you got to use for masking grab another person it'll make your life a lot easier all right so go a little bit more in depth than this so what you want to do is you want to peel one side up like i said because you're doing it in halves and then what you want to do is kind of start a corner and just tape that corner to the edge and do the same way with the bottom and then put a couple in the middle and just make sure your paper is really secure because what you're going to do is you're going to peel this white film the backing off of this and you're just going to peel it all at once and then once you get down to the middle of it where that tape's at you just want to kind of peel it away and you want to get the most as what you can um, the rest of it you can just get it when you do the other side but if you you got it really a nasty line it's kind of hard to get it back from the back side of it so you, that's the only thing you want to watch for is to make sure you know i can go and grab all this stuff and make sure it's off um, and then what you're going to do from here on out you want to make sure obviously clean your panel that way you don't have any dirt and debris because like i said we're going to be cutting on this and then painting over it so you want it to be as flat as you possibly can but you're going to grab this this is where two people come in handy you're going to grab this make it as tight as possible then you're going to work from the center section outward now if you have a curved surface this band's a little tricky because it, it does have a body line here that kind of um, inverts so it's kind of tricky to do it but i'm not really worried about the bottom here because this graphic is not going to go right here it's going to be more in the middle so i want to focus more on the middle of it but you do want to get it as straight as possible and as flat so this is where two people come in handy you just want to make sure you start in the middle of your hinge and just start working it this way to get it flat and you want to work it down if you have any body lines you're going to have to kind of stretch it pull it if you need to but it should form this stuff is really good about forming the stuff and if you do get into trouble you can always kind of peel it back up and restart over because it's not super tacky but i just wanted to show you guys that because i think it's pretty you know a lot of people don't understand how you lay big pieces or anything like that and this is just the best method to do it got it laid on there didn't really have too many issues got a little bit of issue over here but the letters are pretty much north of there might have a little bit in this area but um, other than that yeah i think it laid out pretty good if you need to um, make some relief cuts in it it'll help you out a little bit if you're doing a big piece by yourself but it's pretty forgiving like i said but once it starts to like bunch up and create these veins it's pretty much done for so um just make sure you have it you know another another hand you know another couple of hands helps a lot because you want to keep it as tight as possible when you're pulling it that way it doesn't bunch up and uh yeah it just causes a mess for you because if if we were like using this area right here it would cause a little bit more of a problem just because you would have to take your time make sure you're cutting it 
all the way through it without getting into the back of the panel. And then once you have it cut out, you got to make sure those edges are nice and clean. So it's just a little bit extra work when you do run into something like that. But like I said, these most of these letters are going to be, you might have something right here, but they're going to be pretty much north of that. So I always, I just, on this, like this piece right here, I just focused on getting the area that I know that the letters are going to go in. I get those knocked out of the way. And then like all the stuff at the bottom that I'm not going to use, don't really care about. So I've got an exacto blade. I'm just going to go through here and cut out the middle seam of these doors before I start transferring this on there. And then what you want to do is just kind of wrap them around the edge because um, if you're doing a drawing on this stuff and you're transferring like I'm about to do, you want to make sure all these seams are done. That way you know exactly what it's going to go, you know, where things are going to go. Because sometimes you can't, I mean, if it's a lighter color, you wouldn't be able to see that. Um, so you just want to make sure everything's visible that you need. So it's easier just to cut these seams out, fold them in, be done with it. That way I know exactly the placement that I want this thing to be in. So like on this side, I'm going to do the same right here. But just be careful not to cut into the vehicle itself. Obviously, because if you do that, you're going to cause problems. And it's going to be really hard to fix. So just take your time. Be careful with what you're doing. And yeah, something like that. So next, I'm going to get these on there. I've already got it. Cleaned up to where I can pounce this thing on the other side. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to lay this big piece and I'm going to get where I want it to go, right? So I'm going to get it, I'm going to look at it, stand back, you know, walk backwards. That way you can see the whole side of the van. Uh, make sure you got it where you want it, where it needs to be. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tape it on there to where it's not going to move. And then you're going to grab some cereal paper. I'm going to use black. They make them in all sorts of different colors. So um, if you're working like I don't on a you know a black car, you obviously can't use black. You can get like white. I think there's like green, red, making tons of different colors for it. I don't think I have any in here. I think all my all mine is in the house. But I want to grab black just because black's going to show up the best against this. And then I'm going to what I'm going to do that cereal purple cereal paper all that is is it's a graphite paper on one side and the other side is just you know it doesn't have anything on it so what you do is you take that paper and you wedge it in between what you're drawing on and the surface you're putting it on you want to make sure that graphite um, side is down on what you want to transfer and then what you're going to do is you're just going to pretty much take a pencil or a pen, anything that's got a ballpoint on it, and you're just going to trace out exactly what we have here on your paper. And you just want to make sure you take your time because this, this, this step is pretty much your final rendition of what you're going to be transferring onto here. So you'll make sure you take your time, trace it right. Um, but you always want to make sure the... Sarrel paper. And that's how you pronounce it. It's like S-A-R-A-L. It's a really weird name, but uh, you want to make sure that is nice and tight on there. And that way, when you're transferring, it's not like flapping because, like I said, it is graphite. So if you put your hand on it, you're going to get graphite on your hand. So if you have it sitting there, you're tracing it, you're putting pressure on it, and it's sitting there kind of moving on you, you're going to get that transferred onto your surface. So you just want to make sure that you're taking your time and make sure everything's nice and tight, especially the serial paper, and then make sure your your surface that you're tracing on is nice and tight and it's not going to move on you. And that's pretty much it. And what it'll do is it'll just transfer that graphite onto that surface. Another way to do it is get a graphite pencil or a graphite chalk, turn your paper upside down, on the other, you know, just 
turn it over and then cover the whole back side of this with that graphite light on where you need to go and then you can trace it out that way too so you're just pretty much tracing the graphite onto it and it's going to show up on the surface so i'm going to go ahead and do that and get to it and i'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done so i gonna show you guys this stuff real quick this is what i'm talking about this is several paper paper i can't say paper today <laughs> my r's um but this is that paper i was talking about i don't have enough black this is all the black i have so i had a bunch of white so we're going to use white instead but it's just this flimsy old paper that's got you know it's pretty much like chalk the white is almost directly like chalk um but i got it all laid out all i did was place it where i wanted it and then i you know flipped it up up and over and make sure i got it where the letters are and you just make sure to tighten it by tape because it does crunch up a little bit. Um, but once you got all that pretty much stretched out towards as flat as it can go and where you need it to go, you can see exactly it's covering up just the letters part. And then uh, you can flip your paper back on, over it and make sure your paper you're transferring on is tight as well. So when you do this, you try not to lean on it because if you go and you put a print on it, it transfers on the other side. So you gotta be really careful when you're using this stuff. If you're running on something that you don't want this powder to go everywhere, um, it's, you know, just don't lean on it. Don't press on it as much. Only where you want it to go because it will transfer over. Um, obviously this van, I'm not really worried about all that stuff. One, because it's on vinyl. Two, the vein is clear coated. So this is pretty much like I said, it's just like chalk. Um, so it will clean off any surface. Um, now, if you really dig into it, like saying if you got a black panel or something you're working on, you transfer something, you really dig into it. I, I mean, I've always been able to got it off with some water cleaner. Like I'm just saying if you don't have it clear coated, if you just got base coat on it, and you want to transfer something on it. Just be a little bit careful, but I've never had an issue with not being able to clean it. I always just use like a waterborne cleaner and it'll wipe right off. Um, honestly, you take a tack rag and it'll come right off, but like if you dig into it, it might be a different story. Haven't tried it, so just be careful. But this is all ready to transfer. Now, like I said earlier in the video, this is the final step as far as what you want this thing to look like on the other side. So you really wanna take your time in this spot and just really work on it. And just, you know, make sure your lines are really clean. The cleaner your lines are, the better it's gonna look on the other side. And the better you're gonna have um, a steady hand cutting it out. Cause that's what's the most important is being able to cut this stuff straight and knowing what you're cutting because once you cut it you're pretty much i mean you got to start all over at that point so you always want to take steps forwards not backwards so just be careful on where you put stuff and you shouldn't have any problems so i want to get the transfer in this stuff you can use i mean i don't really recommend using a pencil i always try to grab a pen pen works best because it's hard it's got a you know that ballpoint is fine so it transfers the best. So I'll just grab a pen and do it. But yeah, I just want to show you guys what it looks like right now. And I've already noticed something I need to fix. I need to have this piece right here. So at the very end of it, I'm going to draw it on once I get the chalk laid out on the other side. Uh, because you will have to draw it. You know, I'm not going to cut right on the chalk. I'm going to actually draw it on once it's transferred. That way it's on there. And then I can do any minor tweaks I need to do. Because, like, since I have this showing, it really needs to be shown right here, too. So I, that's one thing I missed. So I'll be going over it one more time before I actually put a blade on it. But this is the tedious part. The blade's the tedious part as well. But this is probably a little bit more tedious because you want it to get it to look good and look correct. So I want to get to it. Got all the paper off. And now you guys can see it. 
starting to come to life just by doing that because it is actually on the van. You guys probably can't see it in the video since it's white, but in person you can make out exactly the you know the placement, what it's going to look like, all that jazz. So it's looking really really good. Um, the only thing I didn't really mention before I started tracing this out was when you get done doing this don't get in a hurry of just especially if you got something that's kind of like this where it's got to be in a certain area um, don't get in a hurry and just start ripping everything off ripping all this stuff off what you want to do is like hinge like I hinged I hinged that paper to where I can roll it up and then slowly tear like one of the edges away just to double check to make sure everything looks good um, the way you want it before you start ripping all that off because if I would have just ripped all this off and messed up and actually placed this stuff on the other side nothing would have transferred and I would have lost everything as far as the placement goes and I have to redo all of it uh, I have done that a couple times honestly uh, I've put that paper on and done some really intricate tracing and I go to flip it up, take everything off, have everything in place where it needs to be and I pull it up and there's nothing at all. Like I just flipped it on the wrong side. I always tend to double check. I always try to wipe my thumb on it to see which side is the side that's going to transfer. Because like I said, there's only one side on this paper that transfers, so you want to double check that stuff. Because I have personally done it a couple times, just being in a hurry. So always double check it, you know, before you start ripping anything off. And make sure it is, you know, especially if you did it, you didn't really, you know, you kind of got really sloppy with it, it would show. Because obviously it's, I mean, they're, the lines are pretty dominant as far as what you traced. So... You just want to make sure everything is the way you want it. So just don't get in a hurry. But yeah, from here, what do you do? Well, for one, you don't want to really touch it because it will... I mean, it's not really easy to wipe off on this vinyl. If you're doing it on a surface, it does... It's like I said, it's like chalk, so it's easier to wipe it off. But being on this, um, it seems like it's sticking pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pencil out and I'm going to pencil in like this area right here on this T that I need to pencil in. And then uh, I might play around with this little curly cue a little bit just to get it um, looking all right. Obviously this side didn't transfer from this T so I got to fix that. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Just little stuff here and there. I want to kind of, you know, make sure it's it's chiseled in there. And then what I'll do is probably take um, a Sharpie and outline it again to make sure it is um, bold. And I know exactly where my cut needs to be. Um, it's always good to go back over the stuff with Sharpie if you're transferring it like this and going to razor blade on it. Um, for one, you can see your lines better. For two, once I start peeling this off, um, I'm not gonna peel everything out at once. So there's gonna be a multiple layers of paint. So if I if I would leave it on this and I did like the background first on the, the letters and I go to paint those, paint's gonna cover this white pretty easily. Sharpie paint tends to bleed, or Sharpie tends to bleed through paint. So you're able to keep your lines and know exactly where things are. So that's another reason. It works out better that way so I want to do all that and then uh, we'll start to cut and, and tonight I think I'm going to try to do the background first is what I told the customer I want to do the background because this is on silver with a little bit of shading and then uh, yeah the rest of it is going to be colors that he chooses so we're not really ready for the, the faces of the letters yet so I'm going to go ahead and do all that get all that done that way it can be done for tonight but that's what I'm going to do from here on out is to go back over it with the pencil, go back over it with a Sharpie to finalize everything, and then cut um, the backs out of the, the backgrounds of the letters out and then spray those silver 
I'll be spraying that with my regular paint gun. So I'm gonna have to go through and mask all this stuff up, mask the van off and all that stuff and plastic it, make sure every spray don't get everywhere. Cause we are gonna be spraying a lot of silver. They're pretty big letters. So can't do it with an airbrush. So I'm gonna tape the van off. But other than that, that's, that's exactly how you would wanna transfer something like this. There's other ways, like I'd mentioned, there's a projector if you wanna do it that way. If you have something that you can project but if you're hand making something that you can't get anywhere else, you've drawn something you want to project it on or transfer it on, um, this is the way to do it. It's the fastest. Yes, it takes a lot of tracing, a lot of time drawing, a lot of time transferring everything to make sure everything's right. But in the end, it, you mean you can call it yours. Like this is something that I created. So if you create something you want to transfer, this is the way to do it and call it yours it's nobody else's but yours so that's the whole idea behind this is it's even though it's not my van it's, it's customer's van this is my artwork going on it so i want a little bit of me to go with it and i want him to like it and everybody else that sees it likes it so this is like i said this is the easy way to do it easiest takes a little bit of time patience but in the end it's just so much faster <laughs> so much faster so yep i'm gonna end the video here guys and the next one, it, after I mean, this is the very last thing I need to do on this van before I clear cut it. So I'm hoping to clear cut this thing. Today is Wednesday. I told the customer either tomorrow, Thursday, or Friday that I'm gonna clear coat this. So it looks like it's gonna be probably Friday that I'm gonna clear coat it. Um, at least get it taped up to clear coat. I might clear coat it Saturday morning just to lock everything in um, and then let it dry for a couple days block everything down and do all the touch-ups. So this is the last thing that we're creating on this right here. So I wanna knock it out of the park, make sure it's good, take some extra time. So, but I will pick up, you know, the next video I'll probably pick up is um, showing you guys before I block it, what it looks like. Just like an overview video of everything. That way you guys can see what it looks like clear-coated. Even though I'm gonna be clear-coating it again, it's gonna be blocked down again. So I wanna show you guys a little bit of that maybe a little bit of pinstriping a little bit of touch-ups what we're going to do to the other side a little bit um but yeah other than that this is the last thing so if you want to see the process to paint this thing i can do that too the lettering as far as that goes it's not really going to be too intricate um, it's going to be pretty simple just like the letters on the back it's kind of the same idea just 3d version of it so I'm not gonna really bore you guys out with doing that stuff because it's a lot of cutting and just a lot of base coating. There's not much airbrushing to it. So there's not really too much to learn. Um, but if you wanna see it, just let me know. We'll go from there, but see you guys later.